In Washington, we're proud to be called the Evergreen State. It highlights the incredible beauty our state enjoys while indicating how much we value our natural resources. Our state's ecosystem often faces threats from non-native pests. These invasive species can be bullies that cause a host of environmental issues and other problems. The Washington State Department of Agriculture and other state agencies join forces to protect our state from these destructive pests. Imagine walking out your front door one sunny summer day, hoping to enjoy a nice cup of coffee in your yard. Instead, you find there's no shade, your trees are stripped of their leaves like the dead of winter. Your house, deck, playset, and patio furniture, every outdoor surface is crawling with caterpillars. Your deck, yard, and now your coffee are covered in caterpillar droppings falling from the trees like rain. Touching a caterpillar, it leaves a stinging rash. Sadly, you realize you won't be spending any time outside until the caterpillar scourge passes. As far-fetched as this may sound, that's the situation people face each year in states infested with the gypsy moth. The gypsy moth was brought into the United States by an amateur entomologist named Leopold Truvelo almost 150 years ago. While he intended to keep the moths captive, some escaped and began wreaking havoc on the environment. Since then, gypsy moths have become permanently established in more than 20 states where they've killed or damaged millions of acres of trees. In those states, they can only hope to slow, not stop their spread. While the moths get a bad rap, it's really their kids, the caterpillars, that cause most of the problems. Here are 13 reasons why gypsy moths and their offspring are bad news. Gypsy moth infestations lead to billions of dollars of damage from restrictions on timber, nursery and Christmas tree exports to reduced tourism and pest control costs. Gypsy moths destroy swaths of trees in local, state and national parks. Picture the whole rainforest or Mount Rainier National Park without leaves and needles on the majestic trees. Gypsy moth infestations don't stay in trees. Millions of caterpillars can crawl all over every outdoor surface, even dropping on you when you go outside. Gypsy moths hitch rides on ships docking in our ports, motorhomes traveling across the country, and even patio furniture being moved here from infested areas. Gypsy moths consume tree leaves at an alarming rate. This reduces food and shelter for other birds and wildlife, including threatened species like the spotted owl. It's impossible to get the pests to leave. Once the gypsy moth gains a foothold, it will be with you forever. Gypsy moths have insatiable appetites and your trees are on the menu. You are stuck with the bill to treat trees several times each year, replace dead trees, and deal with medical issues from exposure to the caterpillars. Caterpillars can cause eye, skin, and respiratory irritation. Some people are allergic to gypsy moth caterpillar hairs developing rashes or blisters from contact with them. Gypsy moth populations can explode. A single female moth can lay up to 1,000 eggs. The window to prevent a population explosion can be as little as one year. Defoliating trees stresses them out. Some trees can recover from one year of defoliation while others may die. They're environmental wrecking balls. By damaging tree canopies, gypsy moths degrade stream quality, impacting spawning salmon and steelhead. The trees they kill can also fuel forest fires. Caterpillar poop. Lots and lots of caterpillar poop. So much so that it falls from trees like rain. They kill trees. Evergreen trees can die from just one gypsy moth infestation. Even deciduous trees die from multiple infestations. Clearly, gypsy moths pose a tremendous threat to the health of Washington's ecosystem, economy, and inhabitants. Now that we know just how damaging gypsy moths can be, let's see what they look like. In the spring, gypsy moth caterpillars emerge from fluffy egg masses and begin to feed. Up to three inches long, the hairy gypsy moth caterpillar has a yellow head. 
On its back is a telltale sign. Five pairs of blue spots followed by six pairs of red spots. The caterpillars form a cocoon when they've eaten their fill, emerging in two weeks as adult moths. Adult males are tan to brown with dark wavy lines on their wings and large feathery antennae. The larger female is an off-white color. Her wings also have dark wavy lines. Females lay egg masses on trees and outdoor surfaces. The masses are brownish orange to white and remain through the winter, ready to hatch and start the cycle again in the spring. To protect Washington's environment from the gypsy moth, the Department of Agriculture sets traps for them each summer. The traps attract the male moth by scent and a sticky surface prevents them from escaping. When detected, the Department of Agriculture plans for the best way to control the moths. When determining the control method, one factor to consider is the type of moth. Two kinds of gypsy moth have been found in Washington state, Asian and European. Both are extremely destructive, but the Asian gypsy moth is the worse for two reasons. First, the female Asian gypsy moth can fly, so she can spread more rapidly than her flightless European cousin. Second, the Asian gypsy moth feeds on many more types of trees, including evergreens. Once a proposed control plan is developed, the Department of Agriculture conducts public outreach and begins an environmental assessment. Public input is an important part of the process and it's used to develop the final treatment plan. Once a plan is finalized, it's time to treat designated areas for gypsy moth. There are several treatment options to control gypsy moths. Let's take a look at some of the more common treatment methods used locally. BTK is one of the most frequently used gypsy moth treatments, both here and around the world. BTK is a naturally occurring soil bacteria. It's used widely as a biological insecticide in organic farming. The product is proven effective for controlling caterpillars while remaining safe for people, pets, plants, fish, birds, and bees. Both the Washington and Oregon Departments of Health have examined all of the ingredients contained in 4A48B, the formulation of BTK most commonly used to control gypsy moth, and have determined they do not pose any significant threat to human health. In fact, BTK is less toxic than many things which we regularly consume, such as salt or vinegar. Another control method is intensive trapping. It is gypsy moth specific and pinpoints the center of a gypsy moth population. However, it's not always effective at eradicating the pest. Mating disruption uses gypsy moth pheromone flakes to make it difficult for male moths to find females. Unfortunately, it blinds summer trapping efforts, making it impossible to monitor the moths for a full year after treatment. Still, it can, in a few situations, be used for eradication. Regardless of treatment type, follow-up trapping determines if the gypsy moth has successfully been eliminated. You can help protect our state from this invasive threat to our environment. Here's how. The Department of Agriculture sometimes places traps on private property. By allowing the traps, you ensure consistent detection. If you see traps, don't disturb them. If gypsy moth has been discovered in your area, don't move outdoor items like patio furniture, firewood, or RVs off of your property without thoroughly checking for signs of gypsy moth first. If you think you've seen a gypsy moth, take a photo, note the location, and report it. However, don't be fooled by common imposters. Both the tent caterpillar and the fall web worm create web tents in trees, which the gypsy moth caterpillar does not create. They also lack the distinctive red and blue spots of the gypsy moth caterpillar. Finally, you can always visit the WSDA's website to learn more about gypsy moth and other steps you can take. At the Washington State Department of Agriculture, we care about maintaining a healthy ecosystem today and for future generations. With your help, we can keep Washington free of invasive pests and preserve our environment for years to come.